What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Today, I'm going to be tackling a project that I've wanted to do forever. All the way back in January of 2013, Grant Thompson, aka the King of Random, taught us how to take some household items and make a badass metal foundry. As I'm sure most of you know, Grant Thompson actually died earlier this year as a result of a paragliding accident. I know for me personally, it was like a huge gut punch to find that out. Um, he was a really big inspiration for kind of what I do here, right? Um, yeah. Throughout the years and on his channel, he was really able to show how with um, a curious mind and just a little bit of ingenuity, you're really able to do anything. So with that being said, as sort of my homage to the all-time king of random, I'm going to make his mini metal foundry. I will of course be adding the link to his original video down in the description for you to view, as well as there's a follow-up video he did um, recommending certain ways to make it better to improve upon his original design. Heck, while I'm at it, I'm just gonna post a bunch of the ones that I like the best from his channel. There's a whole bunch of them, so definitely go check them out and send uh, the King of Random some love. So, without much further ado, let's level up this skill. Step one, mixing ingredients. So technically what we're making with this project is a tiny furnace. Furnaces are simply containers lined with a refractory material that can be fed fuel to produce high temperatures. For this build, I will be relying on a mixture of plaster of Paris and sand to form my refractory material. Now bear in mind there are better materials for this. Uh, cow wool and refractory cement are specifically made for this task. That being said, they're also way more expensive. And as kind of a gateway into getting into this as a hobby or you know something to try, um, this is way cheaper and it totally works. For this build, I'm using a 12 quart metal bucket. With that in mind, I added four quarts of sand to a mixing bucket, followed by four quarts of plaster of Paris. Finally, I added three quarts of water and started mixing. You want to make sure you really get in there and mix it thoroughly. You don't want any chunks of dried plaster still floating around. Once you're satisfied with your slurry, it's time for step two, pour the mold. Once you're all mixed up, you have to move fast because our refractory soup starts to firm up really quickly. First, transfer the mix into your bucket. Quick note, this stuff gets everywhere. I tried to be careful. Um, I thought I was being careful. The powder is everywhere. It's all on my clothes. The stuff Flashes, so just make sure you lay down like a tablecloth or some paper or something because damn it's everywhere <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just really bad at staying clean To form our burn chamber. I'm using this jug that once contained wiper fluid Filled with water. It's heavy enough not to just bob back up from the mix by pushing the bottle down The refractory material rises until it's about an inch from the top which brings me to a little learning experience here so I purposely wanted an inch from the top for this cap to be able to kind of sit into neatly, thinking that it would form a better seal. Unfortunately, it is absolutely not a perfect seal and that little bit of space allows really high temperatures to escape from the sides. At such high temperatures, the galvanized coating on this bucket started to burn off. Exposure to which can cause galvanized poisoning, um, which makes you feel really sick, flu-like symptoms, all that. I was outside, the wind was blowing in a good direction, I was fine, I don't think the enough of it kind of burnt off, but just a quick note, can be dangerous, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Uh, when I remake this thing, which eventually I'll need to, I will make sure that it goes all the way up to the top. After a few minutes of holding the bottle in place, the mixture was set up enough to let go and allow it to set further. I also took the opportunity to even out the top of the mold with a wet rag. So while that's set up, I moved over to making this donut of a cap that will keep the heat inside of the furnace. For this purpose, I picked up this plastic drainage plate that you put under potted plants. In Grant's video, he used like a big mouth bucket, a big wide bucket for this purpose, which um, might work better. I don't know, this seemed to work pretty well for me. I just couldn't find one at the Home Depot I was shopping at. So this one just happened to fit inside of my little bucket perfectly. So there you go. Well, at the store, I also picked up some coarse steel wool and a couple of four inch U-bolts. The steel wool provides us with extra structure for the plaster to hold together, and the U-bolts make for some nifty handles. Start by unrolling the steel wool and placing it all around the plate, leaving the center open. In the center, I added a plastic cup to form the hole and my U-bolt handles. Then I added the refractory mix. This was dumb. Don't do it in this order. Once I pulled my head out of my butt, I added a weight to the cup and repositioned the bolts. 
Then the top was smoothed out and the rim was wiped clean with a wet cloth. Now while that top set up, I went back over to the body of the furnace and poured the water out of my bottle. Then squeezing the sides, I was able to gently pull the bottle free, leaving a very smooth and professional looking chamber. While the plaster mix is still soft, I used a one and a quarter inch hole saw at a 30 degree angle to make a hole to feed air through. This steady stream of air is what's gonna keep the fire raging. And by putting it down at that angle, you ensure that should your crucible ever fail, none of the metal ends up going back up into the tube. For the air supply, I'm using this one inch black pipe, which threads into the hole I made perfectly. With that bit done, I went back over to the cap and removed the cup from its center. I then pulled it from its mold and cleaned up the thin layer of plaster that was left over. The plate left a really cool design and the whole thing ended up looking really slick. So the refractory cement is all poured, the cap is made, but will it work? Find out in step three, smelting. At this point, everything was looking really cool. I followed the directions as closely as I could. So in theory, it should work. So I dragged it outside and put it to the test. First, I attached the same rigged hair dryer along with the one and a half by one and a quarter PVC adapter and the two inch rubber quick cap that I used to make my little forge. Link here to see that video. This is a setup that'll be used to feed the air. Now fire needs both oxygen and fuel to exist. So for fuel, I'm using this lump charcoal, which burns hotter than the briquettes you usually see in grills. I used a chimney starter to get the coals going and added them to the furnace. And you can't just throw metal inside the furnace. It's gonna melt down there at the bottom and you're never gonna be able to reclaim it from the ashes and whatnot. You're gonna need what's called a crucible. A crucible is just a container used to melt metals and other materials. In Grant's original video, he used an empty fire extinguisher cut in half as his crucible. In his follow-up video, he recommended using a clay graphite crucible. I was able to pick this bad boy up for $18 on Amazon, which is stupid cheap for something that's specifically made for this purpose and is gonna last way longer than the fire extinguisher would. I added the crucible to the embers and shoved some extra charcoals around the sides to promote even heat. In no time, my little demon cup started to glow an angry red. These aluminum scraps and cans would be my sacrifices to the gods of fire. And the gods, they were hungry. This little guy made super short work out of everything I threw at it. Once everything was a T2-esque puddle of metal, I carefully removed the crucible with some tongs and poured the liquid aluminum into an old muffin tin. It only took a minute to solidify, but do not let it fool you. This devil's muffin is still hot enough to instantly boil water. I held it for just a second and my glove started to smoke and I picked it up real fast and didn't get it on camera, but it lit on fire. So real hot. <laughs> Once cool though, I was left with this beautiful ingot of pure aluminum. I was so impressed I made a few more. There is officially no aluminum left in this house. Speaking of which, honey, if you're watching, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll buy us a new pot, I promise. With these ingots, I now have metal on demand to make castings of really whatever I want. Something I will be doing soon, so keep an eye out for that video. So there you have it, the mini metal foundry a la the king of random. So I'm heartbroken that he passed, but I'm super grateful for what he was able to leave behind. So kind of during this project, I talked about two things that fire needs. You know, it needs oxygen, it needs a fuel. Um, but there is a third thing that it needs, and that is a spark, an ignition. I feel like that's something that people like Grant provide. You know, for your creativity and, and that freedom to try different things, you need kind of that the air, the space to do things where you feel safe to try it, the fuel, the, the parts, the actual materials, but you need that, that spark too, that somebody that pushes you and says, look, you, you can do this stuff. This, this is within your grasp. So um, that's a cool legacy. And seriously, give this a shot. This little thing is super easy to make. It's really cheap um, and it just works incredible. You know, it opens up a whole new kind of thing I can try out and play with. So if you're one of the five people on earth who hasn't gone to the King of Random channel, um, link in the description, go check them out, send them some love. Speaking of sending some love, there's a few of you skill monkeys that have been inspiring me lately and I wanna highlight today. So on my Discord server and social media, links in the description, I've been asking my subscribers to send me some examples of projects that they've been working on. And they did not disappoint. Check these things out. Cody created these bracers and Spalder. Not gonna lie, I am obsessed with that scale pattern. It's just so perfect. It's really, really cool. Meanwhile, Vortex514 hit us up with these stunning bracers. And check out this little box that's made out of leather. 
I seriously need that skill. I would have bet that was made out of like, like a wood veneer of some sort. That's cool. Finally, on my last message video, I showed an example of what Brandon Armentrout was doing with these bracers. Well, he sent me this updated picture and these things came out so dope. Using the background tool to bring up the muzzle is inspired. And I love those lace guides. I am 100% stealing those lace guides. That's cool. Thank you guys for sharing those projects. It's honestly a huge highlight for me when I see uh, things you've done um, and especially when things that, you know, uh, you hadn't tried before and you tried because of a video that I posted. Um, that's, that honestly makes my day. So yeah, if any of you have anything you want to share, visit me down in the Discord or on any of my social media and share them with me. I'll post them here. Finally, in case you hadn't noticed, I have a new logo up on my wall. This here is for Skill Monkey, an all-around awesome person rocking ours wood shop. Check out his channel, link in the description. I seriously need to get myself a lathe so I can follow along with his project because he does some really cool stuff. As always, if you like what you saw, why don't you give me some of that thumbs up love and hit that subscribe button so you know when I release new content. Also, if you have any skills you want to see me cover, leave it down in the comments and I will add it to the list. Well, I should be going. I think that wire rack in the kitchen is made out of aluminum. Anyways, in the meantime, keep leveling up, you.